In this video, I'll take a look at this Hasselblad X-Pan 2 film camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. And this is Vintage Corner, where I'll talk about film cameras. And this time it's the Hasselblad X-Pan 2. And I make these Vintage Corner videos in collaboration with Camerastore.com. And I think it's a real win-win situation. You guys win, I win, and Camerastore.com also wins because I give them a shout out in these videos. And this collaboration allows me to get access to various film cameras like this one without having to buy them. But let's get into it and let's check out this really, really interesting Hasselblad X-Pan 2 film camera. This is a very special and unique camera. It shoots panoramic pictures on a 35 millimeter film. And this was a collaboration between Hasselblad and Fujifilm. But in reality, Fujifilm made this camera and all the lenses for the system as well. And in Japan, this was actually sold or marketed as a Fujifilm. It had slight uh, cosmetic uh, like uh, differences uh, compared to this one. And in the rest of the world, this was marketed as a Hasselblad. And there are two models of this camera. The first one is the Hasselblad X-Pen without the two. And uh, this X-Pen 2 is a slightly updated version of the first one. So this is a 35 millimeter rangefinder camera that shoots panoramic pictures. So this is a bit like a Leica, for example, M-series Leica, but this shoots panoramic pictures. And uh, because of the panoramic format, the camera body is kind of wide. And uh, it also feels a lot chunkier than, for example, an M-series Leica. And this camera can shoot two frame sizes, the regular 24 by 36 millimeter and the panoramic, which is 24 by 65 millimeters. And when you switch back and forth, which you can do even mid-roll, no problem, back and forth. And when you switch the frame sizes, the viewfinder will also show you the correct frame lines. And let me show you what happens inside of the camera when you switch the frame sizes. But first, you gotta take a look at this shutter, which is pretty darn impressive. But anyway, when you switch from panoramic to 35 millimeters or the 20, not 35 millimeters, but to 24 to 36 millimeter frame size, there are these two sliders that come from both sides and they make the film gate uh, smaller, um, the same size as the frame uh, size. And when you go back to panoramic size, those shades or whatever you call them, they slide back and they reveal the full film gate. This is pretty neat. Uh, of course, um, I think um, you probably want to buy this for panoramic pictures, but if you, for whatever reason, all of a sudden want to take a regular, like a regular 35 millimeter uh, frame size, then you can do it. And when you shoot panoramic pictures, you're supposed to get 20 exposures on a regular 36 exposure roll. However, when I was using this Formapan 100, I only got 19 exposures on a roll. And it makes me think that maybe at Formapan they are saving just a couple of millimeters on each roll of film. And that's enough to give you 36 exposures on a regular camera. But when you put the, this film into uh, one of these Hasselblads, you only get 19 pictures because the roll is just those uh, few millimeters too short. That's my uh, like a theory on this and I shot several rolls and I got 19 exposures on each roll so it was not just uh, like one off or one roll that was too short. But it didn't really matter that much, just an observation. And when you load this camera it will first wind all the film onto the pickup spool and then when you start shooting 
the camera will kind of rewind the film back into the canister after each frame. So if you by accident open the back of the camera and there's still film inside, you will only lose the unexposed film, not the frames that you already shot. Those are safe. So it's a pretty clever system and some other film cameras, mostly compact cameras, used the similar system as well. And at the back of the camera there is a small LCD display that will show you the film speed which you can set manually or use the DX coding on the film canister. I set it manually because the Formapan doesn't have the DX coding. And you can also set the exposure compensation and uh, multiple exposures and a few other things using the screen and the buttons around it. But now let me show you some pictures that I shot on this camera on the Formapan 100 film and after those pictures I'll talk about the lenses for this camera and few other things about this camera. Enjoy the pictures. I hope you liked the pictures and I even printed some of them and they look absolutely awesome. And now if you're still here, please also consider to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell down there so you'll get a notification every time I post a new uh, video. And now let's talk about the lenses for the Hasselblad X-Pan 2. There are three lenses for the Hasselblad X-Pan system. There's the 45mm f4 that I have on the camera right now. Then there's uh, the 90mm f4 which is here. And then there's also a 30mm f5.6 lens which I don't have. The angle of view, the horizontal angle of view of the 45mm lens equals to about 24mm uh, regular camera lens. And the horizontal angle of view of this 90 millimeter equals to about 45 millimeter regular camera lens. So these lenses are essentially like medium format lenses because the negative size is or the negative is 65 millimeters wide. So it's pretty much the same size as a 6x7 medium format the negative size but it's of course just um, a panoramic shot not as uh, tall as the 6x7 frame but as wide as um, a 6x7 frame approximately. And like I said I don't have the 30 millimeter lens and I have never tried it but at least these these two lenses, the 45 and the 90, are really, really nice lenses. They are sharp and contrasty and they make beautiful pictures, as you might have noticed when you saw my samples earlier in this video. And what is also remarkable is the size of these lenses. These are almost like tiny. Of course, the maximum aperture is only f4, but still when you uh, consider that these are essentially medium format lenses, look at this 90 millimeter, it's absolutely tiny. So if you are interested in the panoramic format with medium format quality, then this kind of camera is really perfect for you. And then the viewfinder, which is gorgeous. It's probably the best uh, rangefinder viewfinder that I have ever looked through. The frame lines are bright and especially the, the um, rangefinder patch in the middle of the frame. It's so bright and clear and uh, it makes the focusing really a breeze. And uh, this beats uh, any Leica viewfinder uh, any day, hands down, in my opinion. And in the viewfinder you have a very clear display of the shutter speed and two small arrows very clearly visible and those arrows tell you which way to move the shutter speed dial to get the correct exposure. 
and this camera has uh, full manual mode and also aperture priority mode. I was using the full manual mode all the time because that's the way I prefer it uh, on a film camera. So all in all, I would say this is a really solid, well-built camera. And the viewfinder is awesome. It's probably the best rangefinder viewfinder that I've ever seen. And this camera is such a fun to use. And the lenses are excellent. And the only downside, and this is, I'm repeating myself, this is the only downside I can come up with pretty much every film camera, is the price. This combo, the camera body and the 45 millimeter lens, they start from about uh, three and a half grand euros or dollars. But in mint condition, this combo can be something like seven grand or something. So this is definitely not a cheap camera. <laughs> but if you are into film photography and you like the panoramic format and you can afford this camera, I can really truly recommend this. It's such a fun camera to use and um, yeah, it's just I, I just fell in love with this camera um, um, totally. But I can't afford this camera. I can't justify the price for myself. But anyone <laughs> who can afford it, I, I think um, it's uh, not going to disappoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And before you go, check out my Contax T2 review, which is here.